Good morning, everyone. Hi, I'm Dr. David Wong, and uh, we're going to be talking about Mastering Your Metabolism, a webinar uh, all about metabolism. So uh, welcome to uh, this 45-minute um, session, and uh, enjoy. If you have any questions, by all means, uh, type them in, and I'll help, help to address them at the end. Okay, thanks. So a little bit about me. I'm the founder and the formulator of Pranan Organic. I've been a naturopathic doctor in Vancouver, BC for over 25 years. Um, I've uh, been also the founder of the Boucher Institute, which is the second accredited naturopathic college here in BC as well. And I've done some 15 years worth of volunteer work with our naturopathic profession uh, in BC. Uh, so that's about me. And uh, so in terms of what we're going to talk about with metabolism today, um, our learning objective would include what is metabolism, stress and how it affects metabolism, and then looking at using nutrition and lifestyle strategies to support metabolism. Now for those who will st stay to the end um, and can stay to the end, there will be a special promo code that will be given out for discount pricing, so stay tuned. Uh, this webinar should take about 45 minutes, like I said. If it goes over, we're going to try to wrap it up around that time and hopefully, hopefully answer some questions. Um, okay, so yeah, absolutely a firm believer in the transformative power of pure food. So how it all started was the first 17 years of my practice, I uh, was using the traditional uh, supplements, uh, vitamins, minerals, uh, this supplement, that supplement. And it was interesting, I always found a, a mixed group of people, those that had some, react, uh, some reactions, those that didn't, and those that had a mixture. And, and the results weren't very consistent. What really intrigued me were those people who had these side effects of nausea, headaches, and vomiting. We're going to get back to this, but you know, in 2012, when I discovered this, uh, I, I just decided to you know, throw away these supplements and, and went looking for natural one. And, you know, I, I couldn't believe my eyes. There was nothing really natural out there. Everything was synthetically made by drug companies. So I started this company to come up with a, a much better alternative, and that is to use nutrients from food. So more about that later. Um, so let's go right into the topic. What is metabolism? So metabolism is really like a furnace or a wood-burning stove in your house used to heat your place. Uh, so in your body, metabolism is usually maintain at a, a constant temperature of 37 degrees and where this temperature is derived from is from burning food that you've eaten or have stored in the body. So all this energy that's produced is helping to maintain your body composition, provide energy to counter stress, facilitate digestion, immunity, fertility, etc. So all those bodily functions that we know of in the body is uh, provided for through metabolism. So, and how it, how it relates to stress is that stress is really the antithesis of, of metabolism. The more stressed we are, the more depleted we feel, and we all know that experientially. Adrenal glands are those organs that sit above the kidneys that produce cortisol uh, during times of chronic stress, and its primary role is to provide metabolic energy, to provide the energy uh, for um, countering uh, those, those uh, situations that were faced with stress. In the initial stages of stress, it's always the adrenal glands that respond first. The thyroid gland, uh, the, the, the gland that uh, many of us are familiar with, uh, they kick in as a secondary helper for metabolism once the adrenals have started to burn out. Um, and so this is a gland that sits around your th throat area um, and uh, it works hard to support metabolism uh, when you become depleted. So the difference between hypothyroidism and hyperthyroidism, hypo uh, as a prefix really means uh, underfunctioning, um, and this happens when chronic stress occurs with both the adrenals um, and the thyroid had been burnt out with little to no metabolism, leaving you with symptoms of extreme exhaustion, et cetera. We'll, we'll talk more about this in a bit. Hyperthyroidism, on the other hand, is where the adrenal had burnt out and the thyroid is trying to uh, overcompensate, so it's working much harder than usual <clears throat> while it still can. So in the hyper state, 
is trying to compensate for the lack of metabolism and we'll discuss these symptoms in another. <clears throat> so let's talk about stress for a moment um, as a sidebar. Um, over 80% of all doctor's office visits have to do with stress-related issues, including symptoms of fatigue, low mood, weight gain, inflammation, chronic inf infection, et cetera. Um, and these are, these are what I call the vertically ill. So that means in North America, over 250 million people have these issues that doctors aren't treating or are not treating effectively. Um, and, and I call them the vertically ill because simply these people are somewhat functioning, not optimally. They're not sick enough to be powdered away horizontally to the local ER department, um, but they're looking for solutions. And this is where I come in because I realize that stress is really the foundational cause of many of our chronic illnesses that we see in our uh, modern day populations. And so to me, to fix the cause, I wanted to come up with solutions that are effective for this particular group. So how is, how is stress defined? Well, these are many, many different causes of stress, and I'm sure <clears throat> we all have experienced one or many of these in the past, anywhere from nutritional deficiencies to financial issues, uh, physical, mental, emotional stressors. Um, I won't delve into this too much because we all know what they are. Um, and so what happens is that when you have constant stress factors, um, it can uh, fatigue our adrenal glands and then start to impair our ability to respond or to rebound, leaving us feeling burnt out and potentially experiencing nervous breakdown. Um, if, we don't light, if we don't take action to support the health of our adrenals, we risk damaging our metabolism uh, and increasing our risk for chronic disease. So let's see how this become how becoming chronically stressed uh, will impact um, in, in terms of the physiological effects. <clears throat> so the main triggers for stress uh, can be caused from the chronic stress that we've learned, but it can also be caused by low blood sugar. So oftentimes when I speak to patients, I find that um, when <clears throat> when things get really tough, um, some of the strategies that patients have adopted was to skip meals, and that's probably the worst thing because when you have low blood sugar and the body needs that energy during the stress, uh, it'll take it from other places. Um, and in fact, when your blood sugar is low, uh, the adrenal gland actually kicks in more cortisol, uh, and that in effect uh, will burn out the adrenals even faster. So uh, eventually your um, adrenal becomes depleted, uh, and then the, the whole thyroid um, uh, cascade kicks in, um, which we'll talk about. And, uh, and that, when that becomes depleted, then you've got complete metabolic collapse. <clears throat> so how does stress show up? Well, uh, in terms of these glands that we've been talking about, uh, in terms of the sequence of events, first we've got stage one where people might be uh, initially responding to the stresses with an overactive adrenal function, so that's hyperadrenia. And for about 20% of the population um, who have adopted some good, healthy lifestyle strategies to deal with stress, who are, say, sleeping well, eating regularly, um, putting away the computers at the end of the day, um, and, and so on forth, those people are adapting well, or for those people who are retired and no longer working. But for the 80% of us, uh, we would be either in stage two, three, or four, depending on how far progressed we are in terms of our uh, response or lack of response to our stresses. So stage two um, is the next stage, so that's where the adrenals burn out. <clears throat> stage three is now the adrenals have burned out, the thyroid is now trying to compensate for that. So it's going into hyperthyroidism as we've described. And stage four is uh, under chronic stress. The thyroid now is also burnt out. So you now have both a hypoadrenic uh, as well as hypothyroid uh, conditions. So let's go into each of these stages to describe some of the symptoms. So stage one, as I mentioned, um, people who lead somewhat normal lives uh, or, or who are able to adapt to their stresses and have some strategies in place, uh, they are doing well um, and eating well and resting properly. So stage two, 
uh, other people who may have fatigue, uh, starting to gain some weight, some memory loss issues, mood disorders, and chronic inflammation, and so on. Uh, these are the people who lead very hectic lives, and uh, at the end of um, the burnout, they'll experience these symptoms, and eventually, and this is how it starts, it starts to progress into chronic diseases. Um, and so you don't have to wait until the thyroid burns out before that happens, but even at stage two, you can have chronic inflammation that leads to chronic cardiovascular problems, uh, perhaps some cancer cells starting, uh, blood sugar irregularities that lead to diabetes, and so on. All these so-called adult-onset adult type diseases. With stage three, you will have now a compensation from the thyroid where the thyroid is trying to work harder to make up that metabolic loss from burnt out adrenals. And uh, what's classic about these um, are the people who have these very sort of shaky energy that comes from the uh, overactive thyroid gland. So you'll see things like uh, hand tremors, uh, mood swings, anxiety, heart palpitations. Uh, these are very, very classic. And it's because the energy that comes just from the thyroid glands uh, are very sporadic and not very consistent like the adrenals. Now, as I said, with chronic uh, stress, eventually those people in stage three with hyperthyroidism, the thyroid will eventually burn out and now it becomes hypothyroid. And typically people in stage three will only stay in that stage for several weeks or months at the most. Uh, and so you can see how um, you know, quickly a, uh, a chronic stressful situation so can progress from stage two, three, and, and eventually to four. Now with stage four, also known as hypothyroid state, you now have both hypoadrenia and hypothyroid, which means that your entire metabolism is shut down with extreme symptoms of exhaustion, obesity, co-extremities, hair loss, and so on. So, <clears throat> so what does this all mean? So when you go and see your doctor, and this is the unfortunate thing, um, your doctors tend to, you know, they're trained in medical school to fit the pill to the ill approach. So if your doctors can't, um, uh, they don't have any medication for hypoadrenia, uh, they don't have any medication in stage three for hyperthyroid. Uh, they tend to wait until it progresses to stage four. So in stage um, two, you'll see that there's no treatments uh, from your medical doctor because there is no such thing. And, and doctors really don't talk about stress management. So if you have low mood, you might be given antidepressants. If you have your lack energy, your doctor might say, hey, take some time off of work. With stage three, and this is where we start to see some medical atrocities, with hyperthyroidism, oftentimes you'll see an enlarged thyroid gland, and oftentimes when your body's working harder, just like when you're going to the gym and lifting heavier and heavier weights, your muscles will enlarge or hypertrophy. And likewise, when the thyroid is working harder, it becomes enlarged. And the unfortunate thing is that without screening for cancer, your doctors will often uh, schedule these kinds of patients to have the thyroid gland surgically removed or eradicated uh, with radioactive iodine. And then these poor patients will often have benign uh, hypertrophy of thyroid glands would have to be on thyroid medication for the rest of their lives. When we move to stage four, when you have hypothyroidism, doctors typically will only do one screening test out of four tests that typically should be done, and that's a TSH test. TSH is a intermediate uh, hormone that comes from pituitary, and what they're looking for is for those levels to be high, and then they say, well, your thyroid must be under-functioning, so then let's give you medication. Um, and that is really, to me, a misdiagnosis of thyroid function because you're not really understanding if there's nutrition deficiencies related to the thyroid gland itself, so T3 and T4 should be tested. Uh, and as well, about 20% of cases, ATPO or the anti-thyroid peroxidase testing uh, can show up as being positive, and those numbers are high, you could have an autoimmune disease related to your thyroid gland. Uh, so for those reasons, there's a lot of misdiagnosis. Uh, certainly in my practice, I see many and many of these cases. And then the other thing, too, is that your doctors would typically give a, a hypothyroid situation T4 analogs 
life sentence through illegal thyroxin or altroxin, all kinds of medications that are considered T4 analogs when it's the T3 form of the thyroxin that does all the metabolic work. So, and often, um, often these people who are taking these medications don't see any benefit, and that's the reason. Okay. So, um, so where medication fails, many of us also try different strategies to overcome our fatigue, uh, our weight gain, and some of these other things that we see as symptoms related to lack of metabolism. So to make matters worse, um, some of these choices are not the, the best. So when it comes to diet, you know, sugars and sweeteners, uh, they cause the sugar to uh, rise up very quickly, but then they come crashing down. As we talked about earlier, low blood sugar is also a trigger for cortisol release. So going forward, the whole strategy about maintaining metabolism is really trying to conserve your cortisol level. So anytime you're pushing your cortisol to be secreted, be it from stress or inflammation or using sugars and caffeine, you're just pumping out, you're losing your cortisol reserves. So you really want to think about how to sustainably maintain your cortisol levels by adopting the right strategies. Of course, lack of sleep, so shift work, uh, irregular sleep, irregular sleep-wake cycles, uh, insomnia, all burn people out even faster, as we all know. Doing too much, of course, overcommitment, especially for those uh, people who are in the sandwich generation who are uh, dealing with their older parents who have who may have uh, uh, various uh, conditions that they have to help with, and as well as the young kids that have decided to come back and live in mom and dad's uh, basement to save some money. Uh, and then, of course, people who have chronic disease that eventually develop from uh, this metabolism will further aggravate the whole uh, adrenal and cortisol depletion issue. So uh, this is more of a um, spiraling situation when people get into chronic diseases. In terms of testing my clinic, um, we do physical exams. And so blood pressure, you know, is an interesting one because oftentimes people who have low blood pressure uh, have a hypoadrenal issue and maybe even hypoadrenal with hypothyroid situations. Um, and since about six years ago, the whole idea of um, hypotension has been deleted from the, from the definition. Um, simply because there's no medication for it. So what used to be uh, a distinction between high blood pressure, low blood pressure, there is now only normal blood pressure and high blood pressure because there's only medication for high blood pressure. So to us, testing the blood pressure is one indication. Looking at uh, body mass, obviously if your body mass is high, or weight or obesity, uh, we should be looking at adrenal and thyroid issues. Looking at quality of, of your hair, skin, and nails, also tells us about your B vitamin status, your ability to uh, break down and absorb proteins for your collagen. Traditional Chinese medicine, looking at pulse diagnosis, gives us some indication. Uh, the kidney pulses in Chinese medicine, it's directly correlated to the adrenal function as we know of in North American medicine. Various lab tests, electrolytes, homocysteine. Homocysteine is a really wonderful test, not only looking for cardiovascular disease, but also tells us about your B vitamin status as well as potential risk to dementia and various neurodegenerative conditions. Four-point saliva cortisol test is a very specific test done for adrenal function. And we do four-point saliva because it gives us some idea of that diurnal rhythm that happens. And so that two-point blood testing that your doctor does for cortisol really is not very accurate because um, the cortisol curve is actually a sine wave curve rather than a linear curve. So having four points gives us a much better idea of the biorhythm um, of the body. Thyroid panels, we've talked about CSH, the importance of doing T3, T4, as well as the antithyroid peroxidase. So moving on now, let's talk about um, nutritional interventions and some other strategies that we can utilize to help prevent and also to reverse problems with metabolism. So, <clears throat> as you've seen so far, when we leave stressful lives, our adrenal and thyroid glands become depleted. So we need more of the right nutrients to support our metabolism at a causative level. Um, and so it's really important to understand what these nutrients are. Um, remembering that low blood sugar is a trigger for cortisol release, we need to feed our bodies 
every three to four hours to maintain stable blood sugar levels by eating nutrient-dense whole foods. This also means that we need to slow down before eating our meals so that our digestive juices can be produced for better digestion and absorption. When you're in a stressful, anxious state, uh, your body's in that, that sympathetic state, your digestive juices, your absorption just isn't happening. Okay, so really important that um, in as much as it's important to eat regularly, you also need to relax before you eat. What about nutritional supplements? So the first, uh, as I said, first 17 years of my practice, I was often befuddled as to why patients would experience uh, various side effects like headaches, nausea, and even vomiting uh, to the so-called natural supplements. Uh, it was not until I discovered that um, almost all supplements actually made by Big Pharma uh, that I realized that these effects, these side effects are in fact um, actually liver toxic symptoms. Uh, vitamins are typically made with petroleum byproducts, coal tar derivatives, formaldehyde, ammonia, cyanide, uh, acetone, many of which are toxic and some of these are even carcinogens. Uh, minerals are, on the other hand, are also uh, produced on synthetic sources. There are uh, minerals that come from rock parts, calcium from calcite, magnesium from uh, magnetite, uh, iron from iron ore, and then in the lab they might be bound into uh, glucinate forms, chelated forms, glycinate forms. And uh, as far as I remember back in zoology in my undergrad days, uh, only chickens have gizzards that can break down bits of minerals. So uh, unless we've got, you know, gizzards, which we don't as humans, we really would have a hard time digesting these mineral parts for our mineral requirements. So this is why in the first 17 years, I've never been able to reverse a single case of osteoporosis using these kinds of minerals. So how do we choose a, a nutritional supplement that can help us with our metabolism? Well, it's important to understand that when your metabolism is crashing down, your absorption is, is actually uh, diminishing as well. Uh, along with, uh, you know, uh, toxic accumulation and potentially suffering from some sort of chronic condition. So you want the best nutrients that will be really uh, available for absorption and that can help to restore uh, these functions at a cellular level. So when I discover that these vitamins and minerals are made by drug companies, I literally threw away $30,000 uh, worth of the so-called natural supplements from my clinic dispensary and went looking for natural things. And because I couldn't find any, um, I, I spent about five years between the years of 2007 and 2012 doing my own R&D to come up with um, Pranan organic supplements that are made with 100% organic, vegan, uh, and live nutrients. So after rigorous testing, um, I'm happy to say that my observations were one, uh, there were no more side effects, and two, I had fantastic results when working with metabolically challenged individuals. So, <clears throat> so with Pure Food um, Organic uh, A to Z, these are multis that I simply formulated to help those with generalized nutritional deficiencies uh, who may have poor diets and, and poor eating habits. And so this particular formula contains ingredients meant to support metabolism, uh, including organs like your liver, pancreas, adrenals, and thyroid glands. So it has these um, 20, 25 uh, organic ingredients that contain all these uh, multivitamins, minerals, the cofactors, the phytonutrients, all of which work together. And everything is made by Mother Nature. And all we did was we dried these products and uh, milled it down to powder form, and that's all it was. So, so the A to Z is a multi. B is a um, is basically an organic B made from only organic lemon, guava, holy basil, and spirulina to give you the full complex of your B vitamins from B1 to B12. Contains large therapeutic doses of all the essential B vitamins that is meant to kickstart and to maintain metabolism. Is simply because your adrenal glands burn through large quantities of B vitamins during stress. Now, what's re really interesting as a side note is that oftentimes we, uh, we normally hear that vegans and vegetarians are B deficient because B vitamins typically are found in animal products, right? 
Uh, while that may be true, when I reflect back to why so many people are deficient and are stressed, the 80% that we've talked about, who are either hypoadrenic uh, uh, and or have also with that hyperthyroidism or hypothyroidism, all these people are running around are also B vitamin deficient because those people that are getting their supposedly their B from antibiotics may not be getting enough. Why? Because B vitamin is heat sensitive. So when you're getting, you're trying to get your B from your eggs, your dairy products, and your meats, what do you do with these foods? Well, dairy is pasteurized by law, which means that it's heated, and you're cooking your eggs and your meats. What happens to the bees? Well, they get destroyed in the process. So this explains why there's an epidemic of people out there being B deficient and who are chronically stressed with metabolic issues. So moving on, here's the prominent organic pure food seed. Uh, it's a vegan source of Mother Nature's most powerful antioxidant, the vitamin C, in a whole food complex, um, which is a lot more absorbable than your synthetic ascorbic acid. Um, you know, if you think about the, the, the idea of uh, overcoming scurvy, which is a vitamin C deficiency, there is no such thing as overcoming that with using synthetic ascorbic acid. You have to get your vitamin C from a food source. Um, so vitamin C is also a key nutrient that the adrenal gland uses up in large quantities with chronic stress. Now, <clears throat> moving on to the prana organic pure food iron, this is uh, uh, iron that's only made from curry leaves, amla berries, and moringa leaves. Curry leaves provides the main source of this highly absorbable iron that does not come from iron ore. And I've been used in Ayurvedic medicine for more than 3,000 years uh, without the typical side effects of constipation, stomach upset. The iron ore particles. So it's interesting to note that people with anemia may be suffering also from anxiety and panic attacks. Uh, that's because they're not getting enough oxygen to the brain, and that may be just a reaction based on what's happening to the body. Um, and so they should get your their iron and hemoglobin tested. And what I've observed with my practice and certainly with other people who've been taking this, is about 80% who are taking this particular formula uh, who have anemia, their serum iron can be restored. And so that's much better than what we're seeing out there with people taking the synthetic iron who may be taking it for years and even upwards of three or five years and they're still anemic. And again, going back to what I, how I explained it, unless you have gizzards, you cannot break down bits of metal like iron ore. So that's the reason why curry iron that comes from leaves are available and why it was so well with many people. So going back to our stages of the progression of metabolic loss, the prana and organic A to Z provides the core nutrients that is used as a foundational nutrient support for your metabolism from stages one through to four. So at all stages, A to Z should be used, okay? Uh, which is simply not getting enough of the essential vitamins and minerals, um, and this helps to cover that off. The problem B and C are specifically formulated with therapeutic levels of these vitamins for people that are adrenal deficient. So from stages two to four, these should be added to the program. Um, and if you have hypothyroidism in stage four, you may need additional thyroid glandular support from your alternative practitioner, okay? So that, that's how those work. Now let's talk about lifestyle, which is probably my favorite topic because I've seen dramatic improvements from people who have made some changes with their lifestyles. So in terms of stress management, breathing to me is like the quickest way to, to calm somebody down from an anxious fight or flight state to a place of relaxation. I've um, had situations in the past where patients would call me in the middle of an anxiety or panic attack and just within a minute of just speaking to them, having them close their eyes, slowing down their breathing, inhaling and exhaling slowly, uh, within a minute or so, they're, they're, uh, they would be in a calm state. So that's, that's been my experience. Um, and so being aware uh, and practicing deep rhythmic breathing uh, throughout the day helps to moderate your stress response and spares your adrenal and thyroid glands. 
Uh, in terms of exercise, uh, we all need to exercise, and studies have shown we need 30 minutes. I, I typically like to do about an hour every morning. Uh, and then towards the end of the day, you want to slow down your body's physiology, um, you know, paying attention to that sleep-wake pattern that we all go through. Uh, and so towards the end of the day, you want to slow things down by just doing stretches, yoga, or meditation, or even just going out for a slow walk. So uh, maintaining proper cycles of sleep, exercise, and eating goes a long way to restoring uh, your metabolism. Uh, laughter is always good medicine, so there's many, many benefits. Um, that's always a good thing. And then in terms of uh, community uh, support and community involvement, it's really important to be uh, doing some volunteer work to help put your life into perspective and to create balance. So if you're not already doing some, I encourage you to do so. Um, and meditation is probably my favorite modality. Uh, it's been shown to keep you youthful. Uh, prevents dementia, and I've seen actual uh, studies as well as my uh, some of my patients who do regular meditation that their anti-aging hormone levels uh, continue to go up as they meditate more and more. Uh, so hormone levels like growth hormone DHEA are actually at the you know at 65 who is meditating two hours a day, they're about the same level as those of um, a 25 year old. Um, and studies have also shown that meditation actually increases gray matter. So where stress can actually degenerate your brain, meditation can actually restore your brain matter, preventing against dementia, brain degeneration, and so on. So we're coming near the end. Um, metabolic boosting recipes. So this is uh, some recipes you can try. This is one about strawberry sunrise smoothie. So you can start your day with a plant-based milk with uh, some frozen strawberries, uh, perhaps a juice of orange or fresh orange, uh, some chia seeds, crushed ice, some vanilla extract, and a scoop of the pure fruit seed. Uh, and you can sweeten it up even more if you wanted to. Um, for me, I like to start my day uh, with the A to Z, B, and C, and I'll usually mix it with um, some handfuls of pre-washed uh, organic vegetables. It could be super greens. It could be, you know, baby lettuces of different kind, or spinach, or kale. Uh, and I'll put in a banana, um, some hemp protein, and that's essentially um, the the main ingredients. And I might even throw in some turmeric uh, as a preventive against inflammation and for brain function. So those are some of the things you can be really creative with. So, but by all means, come to our website. We've got lots of recipes on our website. So. To summarize, um, we've discovered that many of us lead very busy, hectic, stressful lives, which can deplete our metabolism to start as generalized symptoms, which can eventually progress to chronic diseases. We learned that adrenal and thyroid glands are responsible for our metabolism uh, and that the right nutrients and improving a lifestyle uh, can go a long way to, to support these glands. Uh, and also to restore metabolism and preventing chronic disease. And that supplement should only come from the cleanest, most absorbable forms, okay? Uh, in terms of testimonials, and we have many of these. Um, yesterday I saw a handful of wonderful testimonials, but these are some of the uh, improvements that we've seen with my patients. Uh, poor sleep improved after seven days being on uh, the, the organic pure food A to Z, B and C. Uh, we, uh, Susan is a vegan, and after just being on the B and C for 30 days, she lost 25 pounds, so obviously very deficient in these nutrients, particularly the B. And uh, we had a young lady, Corinne, uh, who for two years tried to get pregnant, um, and after just being on the Pure Food A to Z for 45 days, she became pregnant. Um, and, you know, if you have any questions about fertility, we can certainly discuss that at the end. Um, and here's a um, person, Chris, who was our um, accountant, um, and for 40 years, he went through adrenal burnout um, after each tax season. And it's interesting that uh, every, every year, she would reach for those B vitamins on the shelves in the health food stores, and every time she tries them, she would actually throw up um, after using them. Uh, so she came to me with this particular problem. I, I, I gave her the B and C to try, and after just seven days, she regained her energy. And she says that during tax season, she finds that she has to take two doses, one in the morning 
on a second dose at noon time in order to be able to work through her 12, 14 hour days. Uh, so depending on what you're going through, sometimes you may need that second dose. And um, guess what? That's it. Boy, I must have been taking my B and C this morning because I, I did this in record time, 35 minutes. So uh, if you have any questions, uh, this is really the time. So we have a question here from Margarita. Dr. Wong, how are you? Happy New Year. Happy New Year, Margarita. Thank you. Uh, Paul. Okay, I am in love with Prana. Well, thank you very much. Um, well, that's great to hear. Okay, and she's still typing. She may have a question for me. So by all means, if any of you have any questions, this is a time to type them in. <clears throat> Yonda, um, thank you for your session. Okay, you're welcome. Um, Margarita, it has... It has helped me with my metabolism. Wonderful. This is why we do what we do. Any country, so Frederick says, any contraindications if on a blood thinner? Uh, yes. So if you're taking anything like warfarin or anticoagulant therapy, uh, any, any of these supplements, the A to Z, B and C, can continue to thin your blood even more. Uh, eating your vegetables within your blood, having fruit and fruit juices within your blood. Um, and so it's really important that you stick to your schedule of checking your blood um, every two weeks, as mo most people are doing. Um, and what we found is that people who are doing this, we recommend that they do no more than one quarter of the recommended dose. Uh, the A to Z is a one heaping teaspoon regular dose. I would use one quarter of that, run some testing while you're doing the anticoagulant therapy uh, just to make sure that you're not over thinning your blood. And this B and C are in measure scoops, so one scoop of each for the recommended dose. And again, for those, I would do just maybe a quarter of that um, recommended dose and monitor your blood again, okay? Hope that helps. Uh, Margarita, I have lost weight. Wonderful, thank you. <laughs> it's great to hear. Um, Yonda, I will be trying Prawn and Asa. Great. Well, you know, give me a minute and uh, we'll get to the promo code so you can get a discount. And Charles, how long do these products last uh, and how long do they store in the fridge? If you buy them um, and you keep them in the fridge, it could last a very long time. Um, typically, uh, we say that once you open it, you should uh, use it up in 30 days. But as long as you keep it, uh, the jar closed and in the fridge uh, where there's no light and oxygen entering it, uh, it'll last you for many, many months. Okay. But typically, based on the recommended doses, there's 30-day um, doses per those recommendations per jar. So the B and the C with their measured scoops, it's meant to be uh, used in a 30-day in 30 supply if you use a recommended dosage. And A to Z also lasts 30 days, and so, same as the iron, all right? Um, all right, so Margarita, as a health coach, I work with people who are struggling with depression and lack of energy. What, dose, what dosage of your products would you recommend for them? Okay, that leads me to a very interesting topic, and I really want to talk about um, depression. <clears throat> Excuse me. So here's a study <clears throat> that is a landmark study <clears throat> published in the Journal of Clinical Psychiatry in 2008. And what it says is that they did a systematic review <clears throat> of 762 studies on depression. And more than 80% of cases, chronic fatigue was misdiagnosed as depression. So there's all these GPs and psychiatrists out there, and because they don't understand chronic fatigue and that there's no medication for it, what they're waiting for in terms of symptomatology is for their patients to say, I have low mood, don't feel like getting up, I'm feeling down, don't feel like going to work or school. Oh, you might want to try some antidepressants, okay? Well, guess what? This problem is so prevalent that in the U.S., 250 million prescriptions of antidepressants are filled every year, okay? Remember what I said about the epidemic of stress cases in North America, and that's about 250 million? Well, 
this is the 250 million people who are taking this. And the study that we just looked at was true. That means 200 million of these people are taking these antidepressants for the wrong reason. And to make matters worse, these things are not absorbed 100%. End up in our toilet, into the groundwater, through our streams and rivers, and into the oceans. And now there's traces of Prozac and other antidepressants found in our small salmon um, sockeye fry, causing them to be anxious, antisocial, aggressive, and in some cases homicidal. Okay, so not only is there a horrendous amount of misdiagnosis and mistreatment, but we're also causing an environmental problem. Isn't that crazy, right? So, um, so that's that. And let me see the other questions that are coming up. Well, okay, Yonda says, can I mix the prana in water or almond milk? Absolutely. All these products are considered live and raw, so we recommend that you put it in cold fluids. Room temperature water or colder is no problem, but you do not heat with it. And we always, always recommend that you take these things in the morning and because it's food, it doesn't matter whether you take it before breakfast or with your breakfast, or we make a, a good, well-rounded smoothie, uh, you can certainly make it a meal and sip it throughout the morning. Okay? We don't recommend people taking it in the evening uh, because B and C especially can be stimulating and uh, can cause cortisol and adrenaline to pump out at night, which can disturb your sleep. Um, all right. Anything else? Okay, so let's get to our announcement. If there's no other questions, um, I want to reward you for sticking around. And uh, just a number of announcements here. Um, whoops, let me just go back to the right slides here. Give me a moment. All right. So, yeah, first of all, thank you for taking the time to listen to this webinar. I hope it was uh, helpful to everyone. Uh, the, the, to get a free copy of this ebook, go to our website, uh, so prana.com forward slash metabolism, uh, and the promo code is uh, metabolism, so capital M for metabolism to get your 10% discount on your purchases online. Uh, and if your order was more than $120, then there's also free shipping. So what a wonderful deal, right? So we want to reward you and hope you could. Hope you can try our products for your own benefit. And um, the other announcement is that um, there's a webinar coming up in February. Um, I don't have the exact dates, um, but oh, sorry, here it is. Healthy Planet, Healthy People on February the 23rd at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Okay. And then the last announcement has to do with. Uh, the efforts of Clara Hughes, who is Canada's own multi-goal Olympian, uh, who we all know and love. Um, she has been working with Bell, and today happens to be Bell's Let's Talk Day. Um, so every time you take time to talk, to text, uh, or to join in on social media, Bell will actually donate five cents towards mental health initiatives. Uh, last year, I believe they raised over six million dollars for this cause, so let's help support them. Um, and so that's pretty well. Again, thank you. I just wanted to see if there's any other questions. Uh, Margarita says, it was amazing. Thanks so much. The ebook is wonderful. Thanks for making uh, of this world a better place. Dr. Wong will be emailing shortly. All right. Thank you very much. Wonderful comments. And I look forward to our next webinar. Have a great day.